Hi, chemistry students. Let's look at a, a, a very typical problem you'll find in chemistry classes and in the laboratory. Uh, and that is, how do you find the rate law and the rate constant for a reaction if you're just given some concentration and time data? So in this particular case, we're going to imagine that the reaction is two times whatever this chemical species, two of these M's will somehow form the products P. And we're given the initial concentration right here of M in our container. And over time, we see that it decreases as it makes some of the P, um, some of the product. So the question is, how can we go about finding an answer to this problem? How do we get the rate law? How do we get the rate constant? Well, let's go over and look at our integrated rate laws because those are the things that, these are the equations which express a relationship between concentration and time. If you look over here, here's the concentration of our reactant at any time, here's the time. And then, of course, we also have our initial concentration, the rate constant, and then this A, is this lowercase a, is the stoichiometric coefficient. For our example, the stoichiometric coefficient is 2, so in all of these equations, the little a would become a 2. All right, uh, just so you know, this A right here without the little naught, that's all of these values that you see below. And this particular one, 1.34 is a naught for all of these examples, no matter what the order. So what I do is I go ahead and take each one of these integrated rate laws, which you'll be given, probably in this exact format that you can see in the top two rows. All right, the stuff below the arrow is what you'd have to be, you have to be able to do, which is rearrange it into a linear format. So all I've done is I've taken the A naught and taken it over to the other side, and then I've color coded it. So my concentration at any time and my time are variables because they can change as the reaction goes on. So I've left them as, as black. The red here, minus A times K, that's equal to the slope. It has to be if this is all to be a linear relationship. And then finally, the initial concentration is related to the intercept. We don't really care too much about this because we know the initial concentration exactly. It's 1.34. What we're interested in is getting a best fit to our data by making a graph. And for this graph, to do zero order, our y-axis would be the concentration of A. Our x-axis would be the time. And then if, I, if that was a linear, if our data was zero order, we'd get a straight line. So let's take a look and actually try this because the data is set up perfectly to do so. In Microsoft Excel, they want you to put the x-axis on the left and the y-axis on the right when you select your data to make a graph. So I would go to the charts part of my uh, tabs down here. I'd hit scatter plot, mark scatter, and I would take a look at this graph. Now immediately, this is a, a concentration versus time we should check. Our concentration goes from 0 to about 1.3, and this is going from 0 to 1.6. So this is certainly the concentration column, while this is going from 0 to 40, which matches our time. So we know that this is concentration versus time. We can also see it's not a straight line. So this relationship that we've created here, right here, this is a linear relationship. This is the equation for a line, a straight line. This would have to be a curve. So we can right now discount this as zero order. It is not a zero order reaction. So I'm going to actually delete that graph because we don't need it anymore. We go over here. Let's look at the first order. And when we rearrange the first order, we find that the natural log of A is our y-axis and time is still our x-axis. So that means I'm going to need to go over here and make a new column, the natural log of M. And then I have to calculate that for each one of my times. So in Microsoft Excel, I type an equal sign telling it that I would like it to calculate something for me. Then the natural log, that's the symbol for ln, is the same. And then I click on the cell, B4, and it will calculate for me the natural log of that cell. This particular equation can be copied by taking the cursor. You see the cursor right now is a plus. If I put it right over the bottom right-hand corner of my cell, it becomes a cross here. If I click and I drag that down, it will redo that calculation for all the cells to the left. All right, so now I've got my natural log of M data. I want to make a graph of this. The way I do that is I select my x-axis first, then I hit Control. If you're a PC or a, if it's a Mac, you use Command, and you click and drag on this other set of data, and now you've got selected the time and the natural log. We're going to make the graph by clicking the scatter. 
And look at that, that is also a curve. It is not a straight line, not a straight line at all. Let's uh, make this a little clearer that it's not a straight line. I'm gonna right click on this and on any data point, I'm gonna say add a trend line. And when it does so, it's gonna give me the option of doing a whole bunch of different kinds. I want to do a linear relationship. When I do that, I can see that a straight line and this data doesn't match at all. So once again, zero order can be discounted. This reaction is not zero order. Let's delete this graph. All right, if it's not zero order, it might be second order. With second order, I go over to my relationship here. One over A is my Y axis. Time is my X axis. So I need to make a column of data over here, one over M for mine. And I need to say equals one divided by my M concentration there. As I did before, I'm gonna click on this in the right hand corner and drag that down to make the equation copy. And now I'm going to select the data. That's my X data. I'm gonna command or, or uh, control click and shift and drag, I'm sorry. And that will give me my one over M and now I'm gonna just plot that particular data and whoa, that's pretty nice. That's giving me really good information right there. So if I right click on this guy, it's a nice straight line. I get a wonderful straight line and I can do some things. I can go to the options part here and I can say display my equation on the chart. So when I do that, I'll get an equation in the form of y is equal to mx plus b. So I now have an equation from Microsoft Excel. Now if you were doing this in the lab and you didn't have a computer to do this, you'd make these graphs yourself and you'd put a, an appropriate axis over here. So this would say um, one over M, and this would say time in seconds, right here. And you would make this graph, you would make your own line, and then you would use your normal techniques for finding the slope, and you'd make your own equation for the line. Doing this, uh, we now have a nice little uh, way to find our K, because what we know from this particular second order is that A times K is equal to M. So my M, the slope, is equal to 0.1908. And I know that that is equal to my K times K times A. So that means if I take this number and I do a calculation, what I need to do is divide by 2. And my, my slope, or my, my slope divided by 2 is equal to 0 0.0954 and that will be equal to K. I'm sorry, over here, that'll be equal to K. So for this reaction, I've got a rate constant of 0 0.0954, it's second order, so my units are gonna be molarity to the minus one, seconds to the minus one. That's something you should be used to doing by now, is knowing what the order is and how that relates to units. So K is equal to 0 0.0594, and then uh, this would be molarity to the minus one, seconds to the minus one. There would be my answer. So my rate law is rate is equal to K times M squared. So there's my rate law. Here's my rate constant, all calculated from the graph. One last thing, let's go ahead and look at third order just to ensure ourselves that we don't get another straight line because only one of these should give us a straight line. So we're gonna do one over the concentration of M squared. I do that because that's what Y axis is one over M squared equals one divided by this number squared. I'll drag it one more time all the way down. Select my data. Again, select the data, make a graph, Lo and behold, it's a curve, so it's certainly not third order either. So there you have it. The best way to get a, a rate law from a unimolecular process like this is to certainly make a graph of the time and concentration data because it will take into account all the possible little errors you have. You'll get the rate constant from the slope in each one of these examples, and then you'll be able to build a nice rate constant, a, whole, a rate law from your results. There you have it, and I hope this helps.